So today I am hopping right on that, that trendy, trendy train to trend town. I am hopping on the trend of doing one of those assumptions videos, or as I like to call them, YouTubers getting super defensive about their personality for 10 minutes straight. So by far the most common assumption I got is that I'm bi or I'm at least a little bit gay. I'd give myself like, a Kinsey 1.5. You know, I've watched a good amount of lesbian porn. I have gone to the female side of Tinder and swiped around for a little bit. In high school, I definitely doubted my sexuality more. I had like, I don't know whether it was a crush or a close friendship or romantic interest or sexual interest in one of my female friends who I was close with. I hope she isn't watching this. I have touched girls' boobs at a party, like consensually, but I've not kissed a girl, so. There's where I stand. A good mummy's girl, pure if you know what I mean, waiting till marriage and stuff. Weird way to phrase it and also have you watched any of my videos? You vape in the bathroom during class. No, I actually just pee in the vape room. You think you're better than everyone. Only better than people who don't know which you're to use. Fucking roasted. I thought of that like three days ago and I was so excited to say it. You got an annoying voice? Question mark? Maybe, it's up to you. A lot of people assume that I'm adopted. Not that I know of. You've gotten an ulcer because of stress. Luckily I have not, but I did like lose my period for an entire year just cause I was really stressed out. So that was fun. You take off your shoes before going into the house. Yes. Why does anybody do it differently? You are the exact same online and in person. And I'm flattered by this. I try to be like really close to the same person because you know, I have to like spend so much fucking time with myself. I have to film this. I am gonna spend like 20 hours editing this. I'm gonna like watch it online and read your guys' comments about it. So I really just, I just want it to be me because I wouldn't want to spend that much time with a fake version of myself, you know? But obviously at the same time, like this is a very edited presentation of me. I'm talking to a fucking camera right now. I'm gonna spend like 20 hours editing out every stupid thing that I say and trying to make myself a little bit funnier. I think in this industry, there's a place and time for being really honest with your feelings. Like that video that I made where I was on my period and repairing clothes, like I was just spitballing, like whatever the fuck was on my mind, it was coming out there because I was not in a mood to pretend to do anything else. But there were other times like my outfit 101 video, I made that while me and David were in a pretty bad fight and I was actually really sad that day, but I was like, you know what, I'm gonna get up and do my job and be entertaining to these people and talk about fashion and that's what I'm gonna put online because you guys don't want to fucking hear me crying about my relationship. Related to that, I got assumptions on both sides of the spectrum. On one hand saying I act self-deprecating and relatable, but in real life I have my shit together. And on the other end that I pretend like I'm really happy and confident when in real life I am super depressed and I'm a mess. Life is messy and I think both of those are true. Like at times I feel so confident and I feel like my life is fucking great. And other times I cry myself to sleep because I don't have a clue what's fucking going on in my life. You stop consistently going to the gym after your new year's vid. This is a little bit true, but pun intended. I did learn the importance of exercise. So I've been doing little butt exercises in my room and I don't mean anal. You hate kids. Honestly, the maternal gene just skipped right over my fetus. That maternal instinct that's supposed to make you turn into a pile of mush every time you look at a baby's greasy face just isn't in me. I don't like them. They're like little weird alien objects. They're always sticky. Hot take, but babies are closer to pets than they are to humans. You know, they don't have like real thoughts that they can express. They're not interesting. They're just cute. And then they like shit on you. If I ever do end up having kids and they watch this, like I'm, I'm so sorry, son, but you were probably a dick as a baby. So you snort cinnamon toast crunch up your nostrils. Oh, Jesus. I actually got some of them out there. You have a lot of controversial opinions that you don't want to post online. And yes, that is true. People are probably gonna heatedly disagree with this in the comments, but I think there's a huge problem right now with internet culture being PC to an excess. People are offended on behalf of other people. There is like a witch hunt for taking people's words out of context, taking humor and sarcasm out of context and people just being so mad at other people for having opinions that are different from them. I assume you watch a ton of porn and come by eating Cheetos with dirty fingers. Yup, you got me. You're an anal queen. <laughs> no, I, I've tried a butt plug and that's it. And it felt like a, a weird cold shit sitting inside me. 
Other than that, have not done the butt things. You open your textbook slash laptop to post aesthetic stories about being productive. I wish, I wish I wasn't on my laptop like 24 seven. This one, I was so surprised how many times I got it, which is your parents are rich and you're a trust fund baby. My parents were both first generation immigrants and they were both the first in our families to go to college. So trust me, there there is no trust fund going on there. But when I was around 16, they told me that they weren't sure they'd be able to pay for all of my college. And like, I'm so lucky that they had even started a college fund for me, you know, and that I had assumed that they would pay for most of college. But my education is so important to me. So from that point on, I fucking grinded. I was working like three to four minimum wage jobs, probably working like 30 to 40 hours a week. I'd work double shifts on the weekends. I'd work after school as much as I could. Part of the reason why I'm graduating so much earlier than I need to, I'm graduating in two and a half years rather than four years, is to also save some of that tuition money. Uh, related to that, I got so many that were like, you have a sugar daddy and I do not, okay? I make my own coin. You know what? Freshman year in college, I did kind of think about it just because it's actually very common in LA and a lot of my friends had like signed up for a service and were like, hey, it's not that bad, but I couldn't do it. It creeps me the fuck out. I hate playing dumb and nice and submissive to guys that I hate, you know? I only play submissive to guys that I like, if you know what I'm saying. Ooh. You had a glow up in college because you seemed too nice to have been pretty in high school. I think I had a bit of a two stage glow up. My first one was like very early high school. So by the end of high school, I felt pretty confident in myself. Then I came to college, gained the freshman 15, glowed down and then glowed back up to where I am now. I was so ugly in middle school though, but Honestly, I don't regret it because I wasn't really conscious of it at the time. Like nobody called me like ugly or weird to my face. So I was just having a great time being my nerdy little self. You always eat a lot of raw cookie dough slash cake batter. Absolutely. If you're not eating the raw cookie dough, then you aren't living life, honey. You have no friends, no in all caps. I mean, that's not, that's not entirely wrong. I think my problem in part is that I genuinely really like spending time alone. I love just listening to music and jamming out, watching movies, watching TV shows, like editing and working on photos and stuff like that. So I don't feel a whole lot of pressure to hang out with people just for the sake of hanging out with them. I don't know, dude, making friends in like a big college in a big city is really hard. You are super fucking smart, but really frustrated by school and education in general. I am incredibly fucking excited to get out of college, let's just say that. Are you aware of your semi-lisp? When I first started watching you way back, I thought it was low-key annoying, but now it just makes you Ashley. I literally didn't think that I had a lisp, but then I asked David and he's like, you kind of do. And now I'm very self-conscious of it. You've had an eating disorder. I haven't had an eating disorder, but freshman year in college, I think I had a pretty unhealthy relationship with food. But it was just the first time I was exposed to a buffet of glorious food that I could eat whenever I wanted. And it was a little hard to manage that. So I started counting calories, thinking way too hard about my food options, running on a treadmill and counting how many calories I was burning. I don't think it was necessarily disordered because I still maintained a pretty healthy weight. It didn't really consume my life, but I just, it was taking up space in my brain that I didn't need. And that was the most unhappy I've ever been with my body. Also wanted to talk about this because I haven't said this on my channel before, but my older sister who, I have an older sister, I never talk about her, but she's had an eating disorder for I think coming up on eight years now. And that really affected my, uh, <laughs> yeah. That was a lot of me growing up, having really stressful family dinners where my mom and my sister were yelling at each other. And my sister was saying that my mom was trying to make her fat when she was, about to fucking die because she was so skinny and then running up to my room as soon as dinner was done and like listening to music to drown it out and shit, which is, I don't know, depressing. Now my sister is back in a full-time eating disorder facility for the second time. I never really talked about it in high school, but I think people knew and my friends would joke like, oh, Ashley, you eat so much, but you're still pretty skinny. You must be bulimic. And I think they were joking, but it really hurt because I knew what an eating disorder was and how it affected people. It's a lot easier now that I've been in college and honestly, I have not been a great sister to her, but I feel like I lost the sister that I used to have because for eight years, all she's thought about is food and being skinny. And it's such bullshit. And I realize it's so fucking ironic that my job now is like Instagram and fashion, YouTube, and I never want to be part of an industry that tells you guys that you're not skinny enough or you're not good enough or that food should control your life. If you have an eating disorder or you're struggling with your body image, please get help sooner than later because it doesn't just affect you, it affects your family too. Don't know how I come back from that one, but we're gonna try to make this video funny again. David doesn't present a compatible personality physically to you. You don't look good together due to his style and you settled because you want a boyfriend so badly, which is clear in your other older videos. But you're cute together now, I guess. 
First of all, dude, what the hell is a physical personality? I have gotten comments on my other videos that say that David is not a good match because he has horrible style or like I should dump him because of that and like dude that is not an important part of what I actually care about in a partner you know really all I care is that David respects that fashion is an interest of mine he understands how excited I get about like fabrics and outfits and silhouettes so that's really all that matters to me. I got a couple other ones that were like, you're really clingy, you're really dependent on your boyfriend, you're always with him. These ones did kind of hurt just because I've spent so long working on myself and it's taking me so long to really be comfortable being single. And I'm so proud that I'm finally at that point. You know, I was dating around, I was looking for love. I made some self-deprecating jokes about being single. But at the end of the day, I'm so chill being single. I had a really great time over the summer when I was single. Now I'm having a great time with David. At the same time, I know a lot of what you guys love about me is that I'm very independent and I do things on my own. I always want to be like my own kick-ass independent woman, but at the same time, I don't think that should be antithetical to being in love and being in a relationship. You have a Pinterest board about your future wedding with David, but you haven't shown him yet. That's not true. First of all, I hate Pinterest. I don't understand how to use it. Second of all, I think the wedding industry is so overblown in the United States. Like, okay, yes, I love fashion. I love interior design. I love event planning. That would be super cool. But at the same time, I'm not gonna drop like 30, 40K on a wedding. I think that's absurd and that should not be an expectation for anyone. I'd want like a nice little wedding. Okay, now it sounds like I have it all planned out. <laughs> this is just, I don't have a Pinterest board. This is just in my head. I'd want a nice little wedding buy like a vintage dress from a thrift store and then just fucking get married. You were the girl who has a best friend in middle school, but as soon as you started high school, she became way more popular than you and proceeded to low key bully you for the rest of high school. Who hurt you? You've owned a webkin doll, which yes, oh yes I have, but Neopets was hands down the better platform. Loves farm animals. This is about to be the most Maryland shit I've ever said, but I actually grew up ever since third grade. I volunteered on the weekends at a nature conservancy where they had goats and chickens, and we would take the goats out of their pen, put them on leashes, and walk them around like dogs, and they just like munch on leaves and shit. The problem with walking goats though is that they are very stubborn and also very heavy, so once you get them out and like munching on the leaves, and you try to get them to go back into the pen, like they will not move, even if you pull on the leash. So when I was younger, I tried to learn how to herd them, and I'd like run towards them and kind of like yell at them. Then the goats would just look back and stare at me like, who the fuck is this crazy bitch? You're a bowl of cereal inside a human shell. You're conceited and you think you have the best fashion sense. Okay, this one's fair because my fucking username is best dressed, but that's my username because I was voted best dressed in high school, not because I actually think I'm like the best dressed human out there. I do think right now I rely a little bit too heavily on like Brandy Melville and Urban Outfitters trends. It's like the base of my style is there, but there's like Mm, there's like this little bit more that I need to find. When you turn the lights off downstairs, you dash up the stairs so the monsters won't catch you. This is so true. You're a liberal feminist with no research into politics. I totally admit, like, stuff with foreign affairs, detailed economic policies, I really do not have the knowledge base to fully understand the consequences and causes and effects of all of these situations, but I think it's totally okay to say, hey, I'm not an expert about that, to be open to other people's opinions, and it's so much better than being completely ignorant of the situation and still insisting that you know what's right, you know? So I'm definitely not the most educated about most political issues, but I do care so strongly about women's issues because I like understand on a daily basis what we go through, how sex is stigmatized, how it feels walking down a street, how it feels to be invalidated in your career. And that's also something that our little YouTube community all has in common. Like 98% of us or something are all ladies. I feel like I'm qualified to talk about it and I'm passionate about it, which is why like that's the main thing that I focus on politically. The last thing that I wanted to address that so many of you guys asked me about is, you say you're broke, but you're constantly buying clothes. I'm just confused. So at this point in recording this video, I had been talking to myself for like three and a half hours straight, which is too long for any human to talk to themselves. I was, um, so I thought I would just re-record this part. Basically, up until around like six months ago, I was genuinely broke, which is why I made so many jokes about it. I was living in a two bedroom apartment with six girls. All of my clothing was thrifted. I never ate out. And suddenly like it's all changed quite quickly. And I'm so glad to say that I have YouTube as like a full-time job and I'm not, I'm not fucking broke anymore, which is amazing. So in the past couple of months, I really have made an effort. I don't joke that I'm broke anymore. It's everybody's decision what they spend their money on. If you guys have noticed, I really do not prioritize eating out or eating fancy food. I still eat Cinnamon Toast Crunch for like half of my meals. I don't go on vacations. I don't buy like luxury products or any shit like that. But 
Clothing and fashion is like what I love, so of course I'm going to be spending some more of my money on that. It's a way I get to express myself, and at the end of the day, it is part of my job to, to have a sense of style that I can show off to other people. So I hope that makes sense to you guys. I don't have sugar daddies. My parents are not giving me their trust fund money. It's just the money that I earn and how I choose to spend it. So 